Well, hello everybody. This is Douglas Allen Frazier with Cast to the Right Side. Well, it's actually a really nice day here in my home area. I'm down at the lake today. Um, just a very light breeze. It's probably about 65 degrees. Uh, I first got here and waited to turn on the camera because there's something going on behind me with at least three or four sirens went by. And uh, though I'm about a mile from that road, um, it, the noise carries uh, pretty good. So I just waited. But I'm glad you're here today. I thank God that I can be here with you and share with you true truths. The true truths of God and what he has for you and for me. Now, my wife, my number one subscriber, gave me a little article that she had sent to me. And I looked at that, and I've gone through it. And I've highlighted some things that I really want to share because, I, as she said, this goes along with what you've been sharing in the series that you did on consideration of the premise, once saved, always saved. And so she highlighted this to me, and uh, I'm going to share portions of it out of you, or out of uh, it for you. Um, I'm sorry if I'm sounding like President Biden a little bit. I'm not that old, but sometimes I do get a little tongue-tied. Anyway, there's my political comment for today. Anyway, but let's start here in Isaiah chapter 55, and we're going to be looking at verses 1 through 3, the first portion of verse 3. Now, let's start right off. Now, this is coming out of my complete Hebrew Bible. And uh, I like this because uh, this was done uh, looking at the Hebrew language and as it goes through the Old Testament and through the New Testament. Now, let's start off with verse 1. All you who are thirsty... Come to the water, you without money. Come and buy and eat. Yes, come, buy wine and milk without money. It's free. That's quite a concept. We have really some big challenges today across, across America with people thinking everything is for free, they go in and steal it and walk out the door, even in front of police. Anyway, but this is saying, come, it's free. Why spend money for what isn't food? Your wages for what doesn't satisfy. Listen carefully to me and you will eat well, you will enjoy the fat of the land. That fat means the prosperity, the generosity of the land. Open your ears and come to me. Listen well and you will live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the grace I assured David. Now, God saw David as a man after his own heart, and he gave David a lot of favor, a lot of favor, a lot of mercy, a lot of grace, and a tremendous amount of Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Now consider this. The point of coming to say and get something for free 
seems to almost be a contradiction. It's meant literally to capture our attention, and I hope it captured your attention. Because when you say something's for free, you know, people's ears perk up. They want to see what's happening. What's for free? What can I get for free? Well, let's go and look at the greatest thing that you'll ever receive for free. In John 3.16, it says this. It's for this. God gave this for free for you and me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only and unique son so that everyone who trusts in him may have eternal life instead of being utterly destroyed. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but rather so that through him the world might be saved. Those who trust in him are not judged. Those who do not trust in him have been judged already, in that they have not trusted in the one who God is God's only and unique son. You and I didn't have to do anything for that. God sent his son freely. He freely gave us his son, knowing that it was going to be at a great price, the price of his son, that would take away our sin, that would make us to be set free when we accepted the gift that he had. Now, here's the challenge that a lot of people have, and I hope you're not one of them. They have a real problem with understanding something can be given to them even though they don't earn it. Psychoanalyst, and this is from the article my wife sent me. Psychoanalyst George Benson suggests that our willingness to receive the love of God and others without earning it is at the heart of both psychological and spiritual growth. In other words, love that is given unconditionally has the power to transform and changes in ways that nothing else can. The question is, will you receive it? Will you accept something that great where God sent his son to take your place, my place, to die a cruel death upon the cross so that you and I might, based upon our trust and faith in him, in what he did, that we would receive it, that we would believe it, and then we would act upon it for the rest of our life, is a gift that was given to us. I hope that this little short message today will allow you to understand how much God loves you, how much he has given to you, and how much more he wants to give to you as you embrace his unconditional love. Now, let me close with this. Wake up, sleeper. Raise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Jesus, I belong to you. I lift up my heart to you. I set my mind on you. I fix my eyes upon you. I offer my body to you as a will, willing and living sacrifice, just as you did for me. Jesus, I belong to you. In Jesus' name, I pray this over all of us. And I thank you for it.
Lord, be with each who receives this message today. Let them have ears to hear, eyes to see, and may they receive this unconditionally by your love because it was given by you. We'll see you again next week on Cast to the Right Side.